out in Ross Beg on, on a nice Westboard day with uh, two California musicians, Amanda West and Pete Solomon. You're very welcome. Thank you so much for having Glad us. Glad to be here. <laughs> and uh, you've been travelling, playing music a lot. Yes, it's been a, a long time goal of mine to, to come in and play in, in Europe and the UK and Ireland. And uh, we've played a lot around the West Coast of, of the US particularly. Um, but yeah, so we're sort of scoping things out here. And you have strong links with Westport. You've been coming for a while. I, I do. I think the first time I came was almost 15 years ago. So um, my great uncle Wayne and my great aunt Kitty live here. And just Ireland, I've always it's it's really interesting that you know he was drawn here and ended up moving here. Um, and just I've always felt just kind of deep in my in my bones in my soul a really strong connection with Ireland and being here I feel um, there's there's a part of it it feels like like home to me. So um, you don't mind the rain and you're coming from California. I don't. Well, I know it's funny. You know, I think I've been lucky every time I've come here. There's never been too much rain and. And particularly right now, California, we're in a terrible drought, so it actually feels good to have some rain. <laughs> Can I ask what part of California? Yeah, I'm from the Bay Area, so near San Francisco, just right across from San Francisco. Yeah. It's bring like, you know, <laughs> when we're here, we always think, oh my God, it's lovely back there. You know, <laughs> it, it, you know, it's a lovely place, I'm sure, to have been brought up and reared. It and is a really wonderful place, and where, where Pete and I live right now actually is in a place called Santa Cruz, um, that's just about an hour and a half south of San Francisco, so we're right near the coast. So we've got the the ocean, and then we live just up in the mountains a little bit in the redwood forest. So it's totally magical and beautiful. Uh, <laughs> so can I ask what kind of style music you work in yourself, um, or how would you describe yourself? Is that I know that's a tough question. It's always a tough question. Everyone hates boxes. Put it in a box. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want in a box. What boxes are you? <laughs> well, definitely, definitely folk and original. Um, acoustic, original acoustic world folk fusion. Okay. <laughs> How does that sound? <laughs> okay. um, so I write my own songs. I've been um, very heavily influenced by Alanis Morissette, um, Kate Wolf, Lorena McKennett, uh, Sarah McLaughlin. Oh, I love Sarah McLaughlin. Yeah. I picked her up blind one time. I didn't know who she was. And I just oh, absolutely, yeah. I paint to her music sometimes. Mm. Oh, really good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love her. So her her voice in particular. And who's the second yeah. lady you mentioned? Um, what did I say? Kate, Kate Wolf. She was very kind of strong folk California. And then, yeah, Alanis Morissette. She was from Canada. Yeah, she'd be very popular around here. Oh, she? A couple of years ago, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. So, like, they'd be very, well, the ones you've mentioned that I know of, very wordy. And yes, very really lyrical, hard. yeah, and and then uh, with Pete, well, you, could t- you haven't gotten to say much. <laughs> <laughs> well, my musical influences are pretty broad, I guess. I mean, from singing in the choir when I was little, a lot of classical influence. Um, saxophone is my first instrument, but um, Amanda and I got together, started playing when we recorded our first album, so I actually kind of joined in with her to add extra things underneath her music, which actually turned out really much she needs is additional rhythm. Um, I didn't really think of myself as a percussionist, but that's actually mostly what I play when I'm playing with Amanda. We, we both have a lot of influence. We love world music. And so that's a, the woman I mentioned, Lorena McKennett, I don't know if you know her. No, but she, she's true. from Canada, and she, she just travels around the world collecting the most amazing musicians and then puts them together in this fuse. So she fuses kind of Celtic and Middle Eastern. and I, I think her voice sounds great. <clears throat> Celtic even really though, doesn't it? It does. But a lot of a lot of her especially the music of hers that I really love is very kind of Middle Eastern oh, yeah. influences yeah. too. Yeah. So just we kinda of love that fusion of, of different and, and Pete worked actually in radio for a long time, had a yes. world music show. Yeah, I so I was um the world music program in public radio. This was in California. This is in California. And my speciality was Middle Eastern music and classical Indian music. So you as well as we'll go back to your own music in a second, but you actually also teach music. I do. What is this instrumentals? Right now, I'm I'm teaching uh, mostly voice and guitar and songwriting, and um, and I work mostly with children. 
And I, I was, a few years ago, I was, I was teaching uh, guitar in an after-school program in the schools, kind of an underserved community, um, a little bit south of where we live. And, um, and that was really great. Uh, and then I had a baby and stepped away from that. And then it's just sort of turned into having private students right now, which is, I'm really loving a lot more. It kind of works for me better than the classroom. I, I have, have trouble with the classroom management, you know, keeping a whole, you know, 20 kids entertained all at once and, <laughs> and I love is entertaining. Uh, yes and I love having the one-on-one -on -one because you can really focus in on you know where this particular person how they understand things and how they learn and where they're coming from and it's just I find it very satisfying yeah. some of my current students I, I found them initially because I'm really passionate about women's and girls empowerment and so I'd put together a, a whole uh, workshop for um, teen girls specifically so songwriting for teen girls and I'd advertise this like three different times mm. and never got enough people to make the class a go but then I ended up kind of getting some private students for it so we're just working on that individually now <laughs> yeah cause so are you playing um, theater venues or local local cafes or, or pub type venues I know there's not the same pub culture in California oh, no, right, like okay. here music is nearly ubiquitous with pub culture yeah, yeah. yeah what kind of venues would you play mainly we do a whole variety so we've done I mean we've done a lot of I think coffee shops in the in the US are maybe sort of yeah. more like the, the pubs here and the, they are because you know, the they have readings they might have poetry yeah, readings yeah. Exactly. so be that similar yeah. vibe right so we've done we've done a lot of that. Um, we've done some, you know, our favorite our favorite venues to play are, um, you know, listening halls, listening concerts, like small like theaters, small concerts, yeah, yeah. yeah. small theaters. Mm -hmm. um, and then also house concerts are really nice. I don't know if people do those here. So what much, would you consider a house concert? Well, just where you have where you play in someone's home, but then they invite but then, you know yeah. thirty okay. friends over and you all sit. So it's sort of like creating a little listening venue. But just in your home. I know. <laughs> I mean, the, I hear going out the window. We have a very nice one here. Life happens. Amanda West yeah. with Pete Solomon, and I think featuring very strongly on this is your new arrival. <laughs> yes, there's our new arrival. And what's the new arrival's name again? His, his name is Solas. So I think like with this, like with his, he doesn't seem to be unperturbed about being on the album cover. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, and in fact, so we spent last summer, we did a um, a tour with him. We've, we've, Pete and I together have been touring for the last five years or something mm -hmm. every, every summer. And, um, we we called it the onesie tour because I don't know I don't know if they call them here onesies the onesies yeah. for the babies right um, they also have them for grown ups here do they they're very yeah I so far <laughs> I've avoided them like the <laughs> they're meant to be extremely comfortable <laughs> I can imagine um, <laughs> but yeah so and then he also happened to turn one while we were on tour it, it must make life a bit different like because if you obviously because the child child is one or two now. He's almost two. So you had three years touring. Yeah. Without it's, it's pretty different. It's different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he, I mean, you know, especially the first year of his life, we just continued on performing and, and Pete would wear him on his back. Um, and he'd just be on stage with us. Actually, a few times we had, we put a little blanket on the stage and he just sort of played on the stage. Some people are going back to as well. I'm just even just maybe just personally listening the vinyls. Oh sure. Yeah, there's you know that. Yeah, but the, um, I mean, it is, I I'm very fascinated by how the the internet is you know changing our world. I mean, technology is changing our world so rapidly, and and in the the music business in particular. I mean, I feel like when I was starting out in all of this, maybe you know 15 years ago or so, and that that was a completely different model than that was still the like okay you need to go and try and get a record deal and have somebody else do everything for you and Just and in the last 15 it years it's you know it's all about the independent musician and now everybody just does everything on their own by themselves now which is kind of its whole own other challenge mm -hmm. and it's really interesting and nobody quite knows you know how it, how, how it works now okay. you know you can look at how people were quote successful in the past but it's a whole different game now so nobody can really tell you what is the path what do you do you know so it's like you to find your own path you do. Yeah, yeah. You really do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the other thing that really strikes me is the shift in terms um, of the listening and the viewing for instance now a singer like Amanda 
If she doesn't have a video presence on the internet, she might as well not do anything at all. If you go to a concert hall in your venue or something, you say, OK, we'd love to book a gig, Amanda's on tour, she's playing here and here and here. They're like, the first thing they ask you is, Where, where's the YouTube videos? For your sense, do you find that's a necessity? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, that's what people want now is YouTube, especially it's interesting, you know, working with kids, I mean, that's where they right, find exactly. all of their music is YouTube. Yeah. The thing that, that made me, all of that made me think about was just this idea, I, I feel like there's a lot of people, I, I mean, I don't know, I couldn't speak for around the world or in Ireland or whatever, but a lot of people that I know in, in the U.S., there's very much this idea that there are, that the musicians are, are very separate from, there's like normal people and then there's the, the musicians or the artists and they're Dead. sort of like yeah there's us and them and they're sort of put up on this pedestal and it, it's sort of this thing that only a few special people can do and I actually I really think of music and art and dance these are all just part of being human and it's something that's in all of us and um I'm in favor of of not having that sort of separation it sounds like the way you've been speaking like that, that music is how you're going to continue I think it is. The music has always been a part of my life, but it it wasn't until I was sort of in my mid twenties that I decided, okay, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go for this. This is what I'm gonna just put all of my life energy and focus into music. I'd set this intention. I said, okay, for the next five years, I'm just going to give my all to music, and then after five years, then I'll you know see how it's going, and maybe I'll maybe I'll just be like, okay, that was just a phase, and I'll move on or maybe I'll say I like this and I want to keep going and then so um, that that time period co ended up corresponding just with when my son when Celeste was born and um, and, it, and it was so funny at that time it was just sort of like well how could I stop doing this this is just who I am this is our lives I think I think you know ending up being married to Pete it was a big part of it because he's a musician and, and so this is just this is who we are and this is what we do and we're in the space right now of trying to figure out, okay, so how do we do our art, you know, our music, and and be parents and pay the bills? It's not easy <laughs> to balance no. all these things. So I'm not sure what it's going to look like or how it's all going to work, but I definitely, I mean, we can't really yeah, stop I'm doing not music. ready to sell my piano, that's for sure. <laughs> so the, fi the five years are up and you're still going. Is still, still going. Yeah, yeah. Still yeah. going. And have you another five-year plan, or are you just going with I think we're writing that on this tour, actually. I think we are. We're doing a lot of reflecting yeah, about... It's actually a really great yeah. opportunity. Um, yeah. it's, it's one of the quirky things is that... Um, you know, having a, an almost two-year-old is a, you need a lot of energy and a lot of time, and we sort of hand the baby <laughs> off to each other as we pass on as one person goes in and one person goes out. One of the really wonderful things about this trip is we've actually just been able to hang out with each other for three and a half weeks um, and really start getting a sense of where our lives are, where, where we'd like them to go rather than feel like we're going to be dragged through the next five years by our two-year-old going in whichever <laughs> direction he wants to go. Yeah, he'll have a lot to say about it, but um, but it's been really nice having a chance to reflect on, on how we do things and and, and where we want to put our focus and our attention. Well, I'm very much looking forward to uh, listening to the album and hearing thank some more you. of your music. Yeah. And uh, can I wish you both the very best of luck? Yeah, thank, thank you. you so and much. Thank you for having us. Yes, and enjoy yeah. the rest of your trip. Wow. Well. One last question, something I didn't ask and I was interested in. Mm. You seem to have a, a, a philosophy around your writing and stuff like so it, it, is there, is, are stories from yourself or from what you see around the world? Um, both. You know, a lot of it is, is personal. I, I have a very strong belief that as, as humans, we're, we are all much more, much more similar than we are different. And so I feel like if, you know, me as an artist, if I can find my own deep truth, it's really the deep truth of, of all of us. It's like tapping into that universal understanding so and I, I really I feel like art and music what I love about them is just the way they can connect people and and um, make us feel less alone in the world so. okay yeah. so we look forward to that <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much All right, thank, thank you, you. And enjoy the rest of your trip thank All you right, <laughs>